Welcome to another edition of Compliance Quick Hits, where we try to break down the many facets of healthcare reform. I'm with Ross Carmichael, our Vice President of uh, Compliance and, and Operations. Ross, what should employers be thinking about today for 2015 in healthcare reform? Uh, Michael, that's an excellent question. The, the two main things that employers should be getting ready for um, with relations to 2015 is if you're a large employer, um, meaning more than 50 full-time employees, uh, you're going to be subject to the law in 2015. Now, there is a, a small exception for employers that are between 50 and 100 full-time employees. They actually don't have to comply until 2016. So in essence, anybody that's got more than 100 full-time plus full-time equivalents, um, you're going to have to start getting ready for complying with the employer mandate as we know it, meaning that you're going to have to offer coverage to all full-time employees, those working more than 30 hours a week, uh, as well as making sure that the coverage that you offer meets the test of affordability, meaning that you can't charge an employee basically more than 9.56% of his or her income. And the second thing that employers uh, are going to need to know is that there's a new reporting requirement that the IRS has put out. Um, and that's what the IRS is going to use to determine whether or not any individuals uh, or any companies owe any penalties at the end of the year. So employers are, should start familiarizing themselves with those reporting requirements and what they're going to need to do as far as tracking employee hours, making sure that their coverage is affordable so when, that they, uh, when they issue those reports and when they send those forms back into the IRS that they're not going to owe any penalties in 2016. Okay. And, and as far as the reporting requirements, I know the, those have been issued. Where can people go to get that? Uh, they can go to the healthcare reform tab uh, on Higginbotham.com. We've got information about the IRS reporting requirements or actually on the IRS websites. They've got the draft versions. It's form 1094 and 1095C. Okay. Where another thing that's popped up in the news a lot lately is for em employers and employees that live in states that do not have an exchange available through their state and whether or not there's a subsidy uh, available for them. Can you kind of tell us what's going on? Yeah, uh, actually it was kind of interesting on the same day separate appellate courts uh, in the United States issued completely opposite rulings on that uh, issue. Uh, the district court uh, for DC said that uh, the employees that live in those states or the individual that lives in, lives in those states are not subsidy or tax credit eligible, whereas the Fourth Circuit issued that those people would be. So we've got conflicting rulings. Um, I definitely think it's an issue that's probably going to end up in the Supreme Court again, but uh, that's going to take at least a year to a year and a half. So individuals on the individual mandate side as well as employers on the employer mandate side should still be preparing for 2015 as a go date. Great. Thank you for your time. And, it, and if you want to look at this issue and other issues, uh, please go to Higginbotham.net on the Compliance tab. Thank you very much.